Thank you very much, Todd and Gilly. Wow, Dignitas opening this series up with a very cool strat on a very cool map that was, of course, Dragonshire. And Calder, do you think that X Team was prepared for this European specialty? Not quite. I actually thought that there was quite a few misplays that we saw from Dignitas. They won the game in the end, but they struggled at a few crucial moments, and that was a big problem. A lot of people that look at Vikings games actually feel you have to get the advantage early on in the game. That's a bit of a misconception since Vikings usually want to fight after 16 when you have the Sun on Olaf. And they used it very well with the play again, but you could see that oftentimes Communication was a bit off for Dignitas. They got an interrupt on the play again in a crucial fight where it shouldn't have happened. They took a few bad engagements. And did they have massive problems with that mosh pit of Elegant or what? Yeah, I, I feel like the mosh pit was the de deciding yeah. factor in several team fights. Uh, and Dignitas did start to get better at responding to it. I do feel like that last fight that we saw in that game was just way too early of a commitment by X Team. I was even I was talking with you and I was like, yeah. I'm, I'm almost feel like Dignitas is like thinking the mosh pit's up. It was like just a few seconds away. It's like, why Ten commit seconds. before? Yeah. yeah. Why commit it was before so that? so close and they could have waited. They did not have to force and if that we're, fight. And if we're lucky, we might actually get to see one of those mosh pits presented by J-Ho, of course. Well, I think you guys hit it on the, on the head is the fact that those mosh pits were the key factor and then the deciding factor late game. But here's one of the fights earlier where we see Dignit Dignitas going in and you see the fight. But the return of the Skeletal Mages, and we're going to see the Sundering come out as well. Things looked really good early for X Team as they go in. And you can see Sonya in all kinds of trouble down at the bottom. At the same time, they tried to isolate Yep. Yeah, thousand. It didn't really work that well because there wasn't enough follow-up. It seemed like the heroics were there early on, but the back and forth here is what really shined. And you can see, nice divine palm keeps him alive for just a moment. But Rhaegar, the first to fall for Dignitas, but they turn it around. And you can see Zul going down. Once again, the living bomb spreading around. Now X team in all kinds of trouble. Tychus goes down. The back and forth continued. Tau trying to get out of there, but this was a lot of the back and forth action that we saw from Dignitas and X-Team. This was a heck of a game. Crucial in this fight, this is the perfect Viking engagement that you get here. We see the shrine and we actually have the entire team moving past it and in one of the brushes you see Eric. And then they use play again and all of a sudden one of the reasons they could turn around is that they move in with a stun against Tychus and then they chase Tychus. And Tychus is sitting there, he's one of the main damage dealers. He like, well, if I stand still for a second, I'm dead. He couldn't contribute anything. Vikings take him down, and that's where the fight then turns. Yeah, that, that was the perfect position. Unfortunately, in that situation, they were still level 15, so they didn't have the stun yet, but I mean, they were, they were looking the for that itself, kind of... Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a damage itself, but we, we did see that later on several times. But there is more Viking madness to be seen, and j -Hal will talk us right through it. This is the fight that you guys were talking about that we saw. Here is... ETC. He's going to come up here in just a second. He power slides and he only gets one. He locks it and he just misses Alex, but the gravity lapse in return. But the Divine Palm does land. He does use his bolt to get out. He didn't necessarily need to, but it was kind of a, a bang bang. Down at the bottom, we're going to see Murden. He's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Is Excuse me, as we see the dive in. Now, Murden already went down, but Dignitas, let's pause it real quick. Dign Dignitas, Dignitas, excuse me, could already just retreat, but they're turning around and they're trying to use this to their advantage once again. And you can see the bush that we were just talking about. And let's start to roll it forward. They're down a man. They're down their main tank, but the gravity lapse once again from Kael'thas turning the fight around the ancestral landing. Zul gets deleted. Now, Tau here on the back side. He's trying to save. We're going to see Paradise get caught and he goes down as well. You see the living bomb spread once again. The power of Kael'thas to turn any fight around is what we've seen throughout every single fight. That's why Kael'thas, the ban phases have changed for him alone. And also the, the flanks that Calder was talking about just earlier. We saw it again in that fight. You get the play again on the bot right. He comes around and flanks, this time killing Tal. Very important to note like how powerful that one level 16 ability is in basically their entire strategy of yeah. team fighting. It was actually a bit of an awkward fight for Snitch at first because Dignitas pushed that fight way back. And you could see that Snitch with Eric, he moved in and he looked for an opening. Usually you want to you want to really flank with the Vikings. He didn't get that chance. Then he tries to use it in the fight. Right. The Sundering comes in, interrupts it, and only because Dignitas had to move back, he could set 
Eric up at the side to get that flank then in the second grab that Jeho already explained. And I've just received word that both teams are extremely fast in getting ready for round number two. The battleground is going to be Cursed Hollow. We're getting all pink and dark and gloomy because there is a lot at stake for X Team. If they lose this second game, they are out of the tournament. Whereas Dignitas, they really need to make it through in order to get another chance to qualify themselves for the playoffs. This is Dignitas's map pick as well. Yes. You know, this is their map. They chose it. They have something prepared here, no doubt. They played against a lot of Korean teams who love playing on this map. So I, I actually really uh, think this could be terrifying for X Team. The tournament life's on the line. And I know we've only had two championships this season or this year. Uh, last year we had a top four of basically what I like to call the four Titans of Asia, two right. Chinese, two Koreans. Right now, that could change. Dignitas could eliminate the first Chinese team out of this tournament. This is a map where we generally see Lost Vikings, but it was on Dragonshire. Let's see if that changes the way X-Team looks at this draft at all. Also, when we're talking about like Dignitas, they came out the victor in this series, but there were a few shaky moments, and especially their con the, mm. the mosh pit control of Elegant. If he gets another one of these three, four-man mosh that he had in the first two fights, then this would be now Dignitas that we talk about when we are mentioning Elimination. They won the game in the end, but they definitely are up against the team that can turn a best-of-three series. Let's see what uh, X Team wants to go with here on Curse Hall with the first band. They're going to actually take ETC away. It looks like they're highlighting it. By the way, guys, do you know if the Lost Vikings are like a one trick pony that Dignitas only used on Dragonshire? Or do they also play these heroes in different battlegrounds? It it's seems like a, it was based on the, on the map alone, right? It is definitely a battleground issue, but it's also one of those constant threats that you can pull on any big map in the game. And uh, J-Ho is already shrugging, and I'm looking <laughs> at it as well. If you see that ETC ban, of course, they uh, come Illidan and Kalthas to mind. But with this ban now, seeing X-Team prioritizing a Muradin over a Kalthas is a tiny surprise. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, a bit we it's a bit weird, but I think uh, they may be trying to do a warrior choke here based on the fact they first banned you to see one of the Muradin. We lost Jeho, by the way. He froze. I think we have to reboot him. <laughs> <laughs> reboot, reboot. <laughs> I, I understand the warrior chokehold, but Dignitas is one of the teams that is not afraid to run Stitches as much as <laughs> that we uh, harp on Stitches. I mean, Johanna, if that gets banned out, I mean, Johanna works really well on this map to be able to interrupt the tribute, uh, the channeling there, but X-Team just going so... The fact that they allowed Falstead and Kael'thas through, who I, I feel are more highly valued than Murden on this map, is a little bit surprising, especially Kael'thas. Now, let's talk about the moment, though, for about the things that are cool for X-Team here. They have with Muradin and Thrall already a good stun lock. They have a Rhaegar early on in the rotation. So their core for this game is already solid. And we still have a lot of damage dealers that are very good. Greyman gets banned out. That's a big ban on the side of Dignitas. But we still have a Li Ming that can be used. She's great on Curse Tolo. You get good poke value out of her. We know that X-Team is very aggressive also with rotations. So if they go once again for like a melee heavy composition, they could try to throw that Zul in again. I think overall, they end up with a composition that they like, even though from a Western perspective and from the course of this tournament, it is of course a bit awkward to see them prioritize the Murden over Kalthas. Much like I said earlier in the fact that they waited to pick, uh, in one of the drafts earlier, where they waited to pick their support, this is an opportunity for them to pick a support and then see what X-Team does to see if they need to go a double warrior comp or whether they need to supplement this with somebody like Sonya. I, th I love the drafting right this, now for Dignitas. This, this, to me, I, this was so obvious what we were going to see here once we saw the Thrall locked in. Paradise gets his comfort pick. You have Misaka on Sylvanas. Yeah. Tao, an excellent Rhaegar player. And with Elgin on Muradin, I, I, I really like what X Team is building. They also have the Task Star for extra wave clear and to be able to keep Thrall alive in the front lines. And uh, this is going to be one of those games where it's like Sylvanas versus Falstad uh, in the solo this lane. I personally believe that X-Team made a mistake with their ban. I don't like Uther. We have seen these Rhaegar picks and Uther bans a lot, but against Dignitas, I personally believe this is not really something that they should have done. When we saw the series with Mind Sanity earlier, they banned out an Uberak, and I think that would, considering the bans that we already have and the picks away, the much, much better choice in this case, because you eliminate another stun, and I feel like Banning out Uther was not a smart choice. And now we are seeing the Charism taken. Yeah. They're going to be very happy with that. Bakery for a long time was hailed as like can, the best Charism player. Can we talk about this now? Before the problem is there's no follow-up to, to the hook. Well, you have Kael'thas with a Gravity Lapse and a Charizim with a seven-sided strike. This and an like Uberag can... with a lot of stuns. Yeah, this is the best yeah. stitches pick we've seen since uh, my and Sandy picked it versus Gale Force, like, I feel. It makes the most sense. So there's a couple of things that are actually really good with this. Think about it. You get the hook in on stitches. The false that positions himself well. 
There's the Mighty Gust. Your opponent is not going to get close. You can eliminate the target. You have the option for Palm. You have the option for Seven Sided. You are also looking at a Kalfa, so you can follow with the Gravity Labs. And you have, with Fishing Hook later against Tribute Channels, a great tool to actually just isolate the hero even more. I, I think it's safe to say that when we look at Stitches, we oftentimes like him as an off tank, except for in the European meta. And then Anubarak the same way. It's not normally something that you run either of them solo, but when you run them together, what they have there, I, I, right. I really like. All right, Jayhel, why don't you tell us who you think is going to take game number two? Dignitas controlled that draft, and I, I like what they showed in game number one. I'm going with Dignitas. Wolf. Comfort picks to X-Team. I like their composition. I'm going to go X-Team again. Right, and Kaldor. I don't like the Sylvanas over Li Ming, considering their lack of burst damage. I really feel that in this case, Dignitas has a, have what they want, and they are going to take it to zero. That was also my biggest issue, the fact that X-Team just lacks pure damage, pure uh, burst damage. So I'm going to go and vote for Dignitas. I think the European team has what it takes to carry on the momentum and show that they have overcome their, you know, baby sickness, so to speak, and they, they have really established a well-rounded roster. So casters, Todd and Gilly, take it away. We are back, ready for game number two between Team Dignitas and X-Team. X-Team's last chance from here on out. They got to win the next two games if they want to bring it back. Absolutely. And that guy, Stitch, is here. Hasn't been doing that well just yet, but uh, I got a good feeling about this one, Gilly. Well, we'll have to see. Let's introduce his team. And that is Team Dignitas in the blue. With Falstad being played by Snitch, Kalefoss by Mene, JPL be playing Stitches, Bakery on Karzim, and Alex the Pro G playing Anubarak. And their opponents starting uh, on the right hand side playing as the red team, coming all the way from China is of course X team with Tao playing Regar, Elegant on the Muradin, Yao Yao with Sylvanas, Paradise on the Thrall, and Misaka playing the Tassadar. Yeah, they have two Sylvanas players, usually it's Misaka playing Sylv, but when they have drafted Tassadar as well, then they put Yao Yao and Sylvanas. Hopefully they'll have the damage they need, but that is not a good start. Gravity Labs and the, so many stuns from Alex the Pro G and Sylvanas first blood at 20 seconds. Yeah, the push face check with the Sylvanas, a classic move in some of my games. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't expect to see it here, Gilly. And Stitches fell flat on its face earlier when it was picked, but uh, honestly, this time I quite like the draft around it. They've gonna have a new Barak to synergize some stunts whenever somebody gets hooked in. There's gonna be the, the gravity laps here with Mene on his infamous Kalthas, so I'm quite liking it. And I'm really looking forward to see if JPL can land some of those big hooks here later down the line. Snitch dodges the Storm Bolt and saves his life in the process. And speaking of Stitches, uh, no Dampen magic, magic at one. There's not too much of a need from it because of the damage dealers from X Team. So instead of picking up Heavy Slam, and that may signify more Slam talents later on, uh, adding the damage to his team since he is a second warrior. Yeah. Anubarak was the one to go for Dampen magic, and I'm guessing he's going to go for a pure tank build here to try and uh, take all the damage. I guess at the front with Locust Swarm as well, potentially. Yeah, we've seen a lot more Locust Swarm than Cocoon, even though Cocoon in this might be helpful to try to take Rhaegar out of yeah. the fight with the Ancestrals, but it seems like you just want to be able to be up in the fight, dealing that area damage, in, maybe in the back line, forcing them back, but uh, also being able to self-sustain yourself through damage. It's going to be so easy for JPL to solo lane as well in the middle because he went for Heavy Slam. Like it's, It makes it so much easier to, you know, to clear these waves, right. make sure that uh, you know, your towers don't go out of ammo, uh, start taking some damage. So. What is something uh, interesting that we see, like a good adju adjustment? Tao is taking a bit of damage here at top. Gonna have to be careful. Alex on the Anubarak. It's uh, always quite scary. He's gonna make Tao tap the well, which is always a nice thing to be able to do to very your early. opponents. Yeah, right. pretty early, especially before. Usually you want to make sure that you have those by the time we get to the first objective fight. And the easy camp here already been taken. Prioritized very early. Always up from the second minute mark. We saw actually earlier, I really liked when uh, Team Dignitas played against my Insanity and both teams actually went for the, their uh, camps at the second minute mark. But so far in this game, I guess maybe because they have like, uh, I guess they still could have done it. Dignitas didn't prioritize it at all. They chose, you know, to have better lane control for now. And I guess probably because they're up against the Sylvanas right. that will do a lot of structural damage at the bottom. With the first tribute being up and top, I'm wondering how these teams will separate out if X team will want to leave Sylvanas down in the bottom to try to get value out of these giants. But because Dignitas cleared them out so much, that won't be the case. She can't do that. Everyone is rotating all the way up. 
But yeah. Axe team's lying in wait. Stormbolt comes out. They're trying to find a pick. Zoning everyone away from the team, but a big hook on Silva. Uh, actually, on Elegant and Murden, he barely gets away, but can the other two? I think yeah, Team Dignitas is probably going to let that one go. Alex is trying to buy some time. No, actually, they start moving towards the top here, including Snitch, who's actually going to fly up there very, very soon. And moving into position, there's the fly. They hit Rhaegar before Snitch can get into position, though, and Tao will stay Oh, safe. Paradise goes down here. He was caught out of position. Manet landed the gravity laps, and now they're chasing Elegance. I don't think they can quite get him. And Sylvana's going right back to work at the bottom here. That's, that's her cue. When she sees everybody going so far away to commit to the tributes, sure, Team Link Test is going to get it, but they're going to lose a tower for it, the wall at the bottom. I have to worry about X Team's mindset at this point. Uh, when they played E-Star in the Gold League, it seemed like they got pretty tilted. They started making some mistakes that you don't notice when they're all in their game. Things like face-checking bushes, yeah. making the unsafe rotations to objectives. And that's, those are all problems that we are seeing them make right now. And so I'm worried for the sake of X-Team that they need to take a breath, have a pep talk if they need to, but make sure that they are not doing anything unsafe at this point or they're going to throw away their chance to come back in this game in the series. Yeah, and usually they rely a lot on Elegance, uh, on Elegance leadership, but he hasn't always been uh, showing the best of moves himself there. So speaking of which, you have to be careful to pull back on time here, not really uh, get hooked just yet. He's still got the Dwarf Toss. Well, with leaving Sylvanas in the bottom, even though X-Team lost Thrall in the rotations for the first tribute, they've still been able to get some structural damage enough They're that they snitch. lead. They were leading uh, in experience. They want the birds. Yeah, this is a great rotation. Super aggressive from Paradise and Elegant, and the fruit comes out in time. Stitch was trying to fly away. He won't get the fly, and they take out Falstad just in time for the second tribute. Yeah, a uh, very short timer, though, so I guess he can fly right back in there, yeah. but that fault at the bottom under Siege here. X team is already ahead on experience. If they can get an earlier level 10, this would be great for them to try and get an engagement. And I think, yeah, Dignitas, they might have to let this go. Hook actually going to land to try and delay this here a little bit. Falstad can fly back in now if they can just get maybe one more delay. Yeah. They put some good damage on Elegant. Tao is having a really tough time at the top, by the way, because of that easy camp. Rhaegar, not exactly the best hero to, I guess, do some uh, deep pushing here on, on that line. Oh, they did not lose anybody. They did get the tribute, so that's a pretty big win. But Yao Yao only has one haunting wave and moved very aggressively. Gets hit by the hook. And another kill for Team Dignitas. That top siege camp here is unstoppable. With Alex covering it, Tao has been doing his best. But again, with Rhaegar, it's just so hard to really do much about it. So that actually did so much here for Team Dignitas. They cleaned the entire wall. And uh, I guess they're doing really well experience-wise here because of uh, everything that's been happening in the last minutes. They, they're not going to get level 10 first, but they're going to get right behind their opponent there. There are those heroic abilities start to come out. It is Locust Swarm for a new Barak. Still thinking, of course, for Karzim, as both are very viable. And with the positioning, they found some of the X team members. And I wouldn't be surprised, especially with a hook, yeah. that they go after seven-sided strike. And Bakery really is the, the OG, the first guy that was playing Karzim a lot and landing the best palms on it. Lately, it's been a lot more about Splendor, showing us fantastic palms with it. But I'm sure Bakery would lo love to prove himself as uh, one of the best Karzim. Alex at the top is going to have to be careful there. He's kind of camping in the bush on his own. So one to one for tributes. This one is not make or break for either team, but it's a good position for Team Dignitas. It's in their protected location because of those rock barriers. And X-Team are going to move in slowly with everybody, but Elegant gets hooked, Cleanse lets him get out of the gravity lab. They're trying to move into position as best they can. Alex actually rejoined his team here from the other side with a nice burrow charge. And I think yeah, it might just be a big fight. It looks like X-Team has no intention of letting Dignitas uh, capture this one. Misaka gets hooked. Oh, that was a huge wailing arrow, but Tassadar has already gone down the palm pretty early to, uh, for Snitch, so it won't be able to save him. But everyone from Dignitas, nice and healthy anyway. Tao goes down. That's number two. They have Gar Gravity Labs to catch out Thrall. That's a third one for Paradise. Yao Yao in a lot of trouble will be the fourth one. And this is a huge fight for Team Dignitas. Four kills. Don't lose a single hero. And they get the tribute and are looking at a boss. The putrid bite slows everybody. Stitches is back. And this time he means business for real. He's doing really good this game. Doing his job just fine. 
yeah. almost making us forget uh, how terribly it went the last few times that we saw him <laughs> come out. Well, they have a lot of follow-up for him, and that, that really is key. Uh, Mene is right there every time with the gravity laps. And even if it's somebody like Muradin, if they know that the follow-up uh, crowd control is yeah. there in some capacity, it forces Tao to use the cleanse. And that's still a huge one. That's a full minute cooldown, whereas Hook is 16 seconds. They'll be oh. able to do it again. This could be very dangerous this here. X-Team starts this. And I don't think Team Dignitas... It doesn't look like they're going to react quickly enough here to prevent that, but they're heading there, which could lead to a fight. They've got level 13 closing in. That boss at the bottom still walking at the wall. Okay, that's good. The force wall will make sure that they actually did... Oh, Bakery, very aggressive with his radiant dashes. Realizes that's the case and gets out because it was a good force wall from Misaka to zone. Just long enough for them to get their yeah. own boss. But the boss in the bottom is pushing and this is much better for Team Dignitas still because the tribute spawns right next to uh, the boss that they want to defend and it forces X-Team into a tough decision. And I love this choice. They're not going to try to contest. They just pull back. They're going to defend the boss at the bottom. It can be really tough to defend against the Curse at this stage in the game, but I think they realized that if they went for it, they probably would have lost the fights and done a lot worse than they're going to be doing now. So they accept that they're going to have basically to defend for the next minutes. Probably going to still fall behind, but they're still going to be in the game in terms of level, talent, and then it's all kind of reset. It would be zero tributes against just one, but for now, they need to weather the storm. Yeah, they didn't have 13 too, which would have been a, made that defense even more difficult for them. Uh, now they just need to make sure they don't lose too many people. Tastar uses dimensional shift. They're trying to get out of here. As you can see, Stitches has dropped Putrid Vile too, but JPL is pretty low and X-Team is coming in from all sides. Yao Yao off the front, front, big wailing arrow and Palm will connect to keep Mene alive. And there is yet another kill as Rhaegar will go down, but so does Falstad. It's a one for one for X-Team. And they're continuing to try to bring on this fight. They have Tassadar shielding even though Rhaegar has gone down, but with Sylvanas gone too, they lose a lot of damage. And there, once again, Mania was just amazing gravity laps and Thrall gets taken out. These fights are going, they're really going Dignitas' way. So much for going, uh, for the patient route of trying to let the opponent Weather get their the curse storm? and defend. Yeah, that, yeah. that was not weathering the storm. They rush head first into the storm <laughs> this time around. And they got punished for it here. A huge fight loss. Sylvanas is always trying to come in from behind, you know. It is, that's, that's a very different approach, you know, than just staying behind your team, trying to land a big welling arrow. She's always trying to blow up somebody from the back line if she can, and so far, not really been successful. She takes a lot of damage every single time that happens, and then this time around, Mene was in position to chase down and make sure he blows her up. And maybe the difference of player who's playing her too, uh, play style specifically. Um, I know that Yao Yao does like this style of uh, withering fire builds to try to add to the damage, um, but also picking up Windrunner at 13. So maybe the idea is you go in, you throw the Wailing Arrow, you blow somebody up in the back, and then you get out. But yeah, you're right. It has not been working out the best for Yao Yao. Yeah. Definitely will try to fix that, I guess, if they want to be more successful. But so far, Dignitas, a pretty clean game from them here. They're about to get level 16. It's 10 take down to two. They've uh, destroyed two forts. Uh, three forts. No, no, two forts, yeah. And they lost two as well, though. So I guess X-Team is hanging in there quite decently. Uh, X-Team has been doing what they can to weather it, even though uh, they've gotten into fights. There is Gravity Lab follow-up. Again, Mene really on point with making sure to follow up those hooks, but it is Tastar, and that's one of the better heroes you want to get caught with the, the hook, because he does still have prescience, even yeah. if he doesn't, isn't able to hit Gravity Lab, or uh, Dimensional Shift himself. X-Team need to be careful. Sometimes they get over-eager, they fight at the wrong time, and this could be one of those wrong times here right now. Every single ultimate for every hero is up, but they are down one talent still, so they need to be patient a little bit more. I like how Snitch went back to defend that bottom lane here against the Sea Giants. Yeah, they already know that X-Team probably, unless they find someone out of position, is going to get to 16 uh, without uh, the fight that Dignitas would maybe like here. And so they're already looking toward the next, uh, getting the next talent here advantage at 20. But with not finding a hook with Fishing Hook, that is X-Team getting 16 and they have made it here and now can look for a fair fight. Yeah, and I think they're definitely going to go for that one here. They want to try and get the second tribute for themselves if they can. Dimensional Warp is going to be there for Tassadar, and it's probably going to be very helpful. He's been getting hooked a few times. 
It's gonna be Meradin actually getting hooked this time around. Takes a lot of damage. I'm not sure if that's the hero you want to target. Mighty Gust comes into play. Yeah, he went into Avatar and they wanted to go for the fight, but Mighty Gust stopped that. Ancestral Healing will allow Elegant again to get back in the fight, but with the Lightning Rod damage from Falstad, he just hit, makes Elegant have to get out of there very quickly. Oh. Force Wall hits Snitch though, and they do get a kill on Falstad. They were peeling so well prior to this here. Alex came close to Bakery, got healed up. Nobody was really taking that much damage, but then Fastad gets caught, and all of a sudden, that's going to mean a second tribute going X Team's way here. And with this timer on the Fastad, do they actually try and go for the boss behind this? No, so far it looks like they're just going to pull back, play it safe. And they Dignitas actually are the ones that, that take their own boss. Yeah, they know theirs is going to be up in a few seconds. Falstad, not one that you want to try to take an aggressive boss against because he can fly in and yeah. Mighty Gust the team away. So uh, it would have been, been too scary. Yeah, <laughs> it would have been a bold move. And, and bold moves, let's be honest, have not really been working out for X-Team the best yeah, in absolutely. these last couple of series. Keep in mind the top fourth and bottom one are already down. So cool. I, I was wondering, could we see one of those crazy races where both teams choose to push and try and find out who takes, uh, who takes out the, the core first? But in this case, no. It looks like uh, X team here will choose to defend instead. The Wailing Arrow, I feel like whenever you, you throw it in there, you have to keep on fighting, you know, continuously. You can't really like be away or pull back even for one second. And it's been happening a little bit too much. For a team that likes to play with Sylvanas as much as X team does, mm -hmm. there's been way too many Wailing Arrow to my test where while it's while Wailing Arrow is thrown in, they kind of pull back and stop fighting for a second. The entire team is silenced if you land a good one. Just keep on fighting. I think part of the problem with that last one, too, is that they used a lot to keep Elegant alive. He got hooked, took a lot yeah. of damage, used Avatar, then took a lot of damage, had to have Divine Palm on him uh, or, or Ancestral Healing. But we're going to get into another fight as the Sundering comes out and hits a couple of members. And the Wailing Arrow followed up, but they didn't get a kill off of it. Yow, yow. Again, going kind of aggressive to make sure that he uses all of those withering fire shots, but still not getting a kill. Tassadar pretty far up with the members of Dignitas, but they have put on some really good damage here. Yeah, Bakery is so patient with the Palm as well. Made sure he used one more hill before using that Medic. Caught a little bit of position here for one second, but we'll be able to pull back. And that could mean a curse here in a second. Misaka capturing, nobody's gonna interrupt. And X-Team somehow get the curse going. Yeah, Dignitas needed to have a hook. It needed that hook to connect. It didn't connect, and that means X Team gets a curse. And they are following this fight. Misaka aggressively oh! dimensional shifting in. Here comes Yao Yao. Finally, the palm will save Mene. And right in the middle of the fight is Elegant body blocking Kaelthos, and he will drop. No Kaelthos for this defense time. That's a huge win here for X Team. They had uh, the knights in the middle of the map doing so much damage at the same time. The top is getting wrecked as well here from Team Dignitas. The the keep has already lost so many hit points. They might be able to get two keeps here out of this. There's 30 seconds left on the curse. A massive fight win here for X-Team. And they know that they can... God, that's a lot of minions pushing into this mid. They know that there's no kill boss. They don't have to fear the living bomb spreading out. Between them, they can just focus on taking down this keep. Kael'thas still down for 20 more seconds. X Team do want to get more picks. If they can get a few more, they want to try to maybe win it. But there is a hook again. Oh. On Yao Yao, there's a lot of escape for the members of X yeah. Team. As long as it's on the right people, Yao Yao's an okay one too, as long as she can throw out the I haunting think, wave. Uh, Rhaegar is probably the best one here that they could aim for, but he's been placing himself pretty well. Dignitas here trying to chase a little bit. Everybody's back. That's a Mene. thundering wailing arrow hit. There comes the palm, but they don't rock it. Muradin gets taken out oh. though, and a big hook on Tao. It's Rhaegar, that's who they need, but he comes in with the lightning shield, <laughs> and Stitches goes down. <laughs> and that's up killing Stitches. This backfired big time. <laughs> And right now, Team Dignitas, they're still on the chase. Sylvanas at the top. Probably gonna go down. Yeah. Or? No, yeah. That's, that's, that's a takedown here. But with two keeps down here, Dignitas are gonna be on the ropes. Ooh, Don't tell run! me Yao Yao gets up. Oh my god. <laughs> they're gonna come in from behind here. They won't let her escape just like that. And Yao Yao didn't actually use his heart stone. Oh, he's gonna be caught. Oh, oh! he bust. Oh, he gets oh! away. Yao Yao. I couldn't even talk, I was too He's scared. a ninja without Karazim. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvanas ninja, his own version. Well, that's really big that X-Team keeps her alive because... That would have been a long timer, by the yes. way, because that, that was so far after it the was. fight actually happens. It would have been very staggered. 
So it's great that they keep her alive. They'll have Thrall back up at seven seconds, and that means everyone will be right back up. And with two keeps down, the third is pretty low too. And both of the bosses are going to come back in about a minute. So mm -hmm. that could have been a big game changer here for Team Dignitas if they had gotten that. Now, it looks like we're, I guess we're going to have some sort of equal five versus five starting down the line, even though I guess like it's zero to zero tributes. If somebody wants to leave like one or two to their opponent for now, they could. So the next few moves here in decision making is going to be very important. And it looks like, I mean, X-Team, every time I say that, they're just kind of moving with Elegant at the front. And they just want to fight. That's, that's X-Team in a nutshell. They want to get into a fight. They believe they can win these team fights. Stormbolt hits Alex the Proji. They have so much lane pressure. Charge away. That's a very good force wall. And JBL Stu's two-turned Vial just to get on the defense back to his team. I think Team Dignitas has to play a little bit more patiently, try and land some more hooks, ideally on Rhaegar, maybe on Thrall, and try and take somebody out even before the fight starts. Snitch getting chased down a little bit. X-Team are fishing for that last keep takedown here. Oh, it's actually already on half hit points. It's such a tense moment to have to wait for hooks, though. Misaka gets hit by the Gravity Lab follow-up, and that's going to get Prussians out. That keeps pretty low, but there's still plenty of ammo on it, so X-Team do not want to fight underneath it, and are going to try to pull Dignitas back out of this. Try to wait out, make sure they're not taking any free damage even from the Phoenix Gravity Labs. Not picking anybody up again, and X-Team have been able to weather through a lot of this. Heal back up, they have double support so they can continue this siege. That keep is actually so low here, if they could get just a little bit closer and snipe it here. Usually when you have three keeps against somebody who has zero, it's very, very hard to win. Something crazy would have to happen, so... Yeah, you just can't contest things for a long oh. time. And, and if, there's, if there's one thing X-Team can do, it's get into long fights because they have a double support here. And that means that you have to get in the fight. You see the Wailing Arrow hitting a few people, but Thrall got brought down really fast by Team Dignitas, and they've separated Elegant from the rest of the They're team. They're gonna chase him down, and I think they might be able to get him here. Team Dignitas, these are some very long timers. We're 20 minutes into the game. Elegant is pretty much condemned here. He's gonna go down for sure. And behind this, what does Dignitas do here? Do they go for the middle, try and get a keep because of these long timers? I guess they're going to go for the tribute no matter what. And I think going for the bosses might be one of the best moves. Both of them are up. These timers are so long right now on both the Muradin and Thrall. That's the frustration. Oh, look at x -Team. They could try to steal <laughs> Dignitas' boss. I think I just heard Dread yell. But Alex is scouting for it. Alex knows that there is a possibility this could be happening, so he pulls back. And this might chase X-Team away from that location. Team Dignitas is moving back. X-Team are still trying to work on this. Ah, they're going to finish it. They were so close to finishing it, and they see that the, the boss on their side of the map is full hit points. There's Bakery. They've sent one person back. They've sent enough back so that they can oh, stop this. They pick Yo -Yo up the boss on top. I thought Yo-Yo was going to suicide to get that key, but I guess it still would be a very long timer. Death yeah, timer just wait until Elegant's back Whoa. up. They only are losing bosses, right? They can get rid of bosses. Dignitas come back here. Yo-Yo now is in trouble. He's still going with the ninja oh! moves. Stitch comes He's gonna in. go down. He's gonna go down and everyone was just back up. There is the wailing or the haunting wave. Wow. They had just gotten elegant back up. And I think from there, Team Dignitas, they get a second tribute, they get a boss to push switch at, at the bottom. They might feel like they have to attack. There is quite a few catapults in the top lane pushing in here, by the way. Yep. So they need to take that in consideration. You can't ignore this amount of catapults. You're gonna, you're gonna take call damage for sure. Do they go for the big push with it and try and finish? There is a, a good chance, I think. 15 kills versus 5. They, they still have that. Sylvanas down. Hey, it's so great that they are fast that, by yeah. the way. They leave him to defend and he can fly right back into the fight. That bottom keeps still being threatened here. And Dignitas, yeah, they might have done what was necessary here to maybe win this game. Stitch is still waiting for a win here. Sylvanas is back in 18 seconds, but X-Team have to not lose anybody else. They can't lose anybody else. They still have keeps. Fasta's gonna flame. They can let things go. They force Bolt to be used and Storm Shield. Here no, we go. No, Sylvanas here. This is a 4v5 once Falstead gets into the fight. It's a 22 minute boss. Whoa, Stitch flies in? Uh, okay, so Paradise stays alive, but does not get Ancestral Heal. That's what Team Dignitas needs. They're going for this. The boss still healthy. They take out the keep and they want to get a little bit more. They need to get, they're trying to find more picks. Elegant is in the back, slowing them down. But the rest of the team. I, is, think, I think this is going to be it. Yeah, Thrall so died with thundering up. A massive mistake here from X Team. And I think they're going to go out of this tournament and Stitches is finally going to pick up a win here. Mene with the palm on the last second hitting. And Team Dignitas, they move on here to the decider match. Team Dignitas.
It looks so scary for them. They had two keeps down. They're about to lose a third, but again, able to somehow find the right picks they need to take out X-Team, put them on the back foot, and win this series, and they get another shot to get out of this group stage. Huh. Oh, this is Stitches games. finally does it, really. <laughs> I was like, this poor Stitches, he's just not meant to win games, and then eventually they turn it around. But so much of that came down to their follow-up, too. Mene yeah. was really on point with his gravity lapses. And X-Team, I think, all like definitely overextended. Like, these last few fights, though, the execution of Team Dignitas, Thrall got blown up, I think, like twice in a row in the big fights. And yeah. They just did everything they needed to be doing very, very well. Yeah, there were just a couple of times where people were were caught, like the Sylvanas in, in the mid, and then the Thrall down there, the Ancestral just wasn't quite in time to be able to heal back up Thrall so that they could get the Sundering off and try to get those kills. They still had all their keeps up, but it was just such a late game boss. This is what happens when you let uh, Mene get his Kalthas. He just, yeah. everybody's on fire and blows up. <laughs> well, that is it, Team Dignitas. I know taking a deep breath, knowing that they have a little bit of time before they have to face one more opponent and see if they can make it out of this group. But I can't wait to hear what the analysts have to say. Guys, take it away. Hey, yo, feels good to be a European man on this day in Group B <laughs> of the second group stage. I mean, Dignitas did what uh, the American teams couldn't. They beat a team from China. And X team, although they looked pretty good in their matches, it was just too little, too late, where they really showed up. And it is very cool to see that Dignitas will get another shot here in the Summer Championships. They will face the loser of the next best of three, which is going to be uh, Team Tempest versus Mind Sandy. And guys, we have seen some innovative play coming out from Dignitas, but they also played to their strings in game two, pulling out the stitches, surprising their opponents multiple times. What do you have to say about that, Calder? This has got a lot of value. I really like the way that Dignitas controlled the earlier part of the game. They were struggling in some of the late game engagements, which nearly turned it around. We've seen a very close game. And they had their fair share of problems with a few of these players, especially I know that Wolf <laughs> is just like standing next to me burning to talk about that Sylvanas play. Well, Yao Yao actually, he's like, when you look, compare Yao Yao and Taco, <laughs> yeah. they both play uh, Sylvanas, right? Yao Yao is Yo Yolo Yao, okay? He dives <laughs> in, he always uses his second to escape, but his first and he always goes in to try to be a little bit more aggressive. Misaka's a little more conservative in the team fights, but we saw some really cool plays, there some really cool delays uh, on Dignitas' pushes. But I think this actually goes down to JPL, I'm going to say it right now. I've been saying it since the beginning of time, and here's the storm. I think JPL is the best Stitches player what? in the world. Okay. JPL getting knighted here by Sir Wolf himself. Now, j -Hell, we have one replay available, and you're going to tell us what happened. We've got a good one, Kendrick. I mean, there's so much. Let's let's go ahead and highlight what happens right here. This is what changes the fight. Anubrak dives in. You can see the follow-up from Dignitas right on top of it, and he continues to do damage. That's going to force out an early shift from Tassadar, but that also initiates the fight. This this is where things get really fun. Dignitas, again, they're fighting, trying to go. Remember, there is a curse up at this point, but the Sundering coming out splits them instantly. Let's go ahead and pause it. Let's let's take a look. Actually, let's rewind that real quick, because one of the things that you do when you're facing a Thrall and the Sundering comes out is you try and force the team off so they don't have an engage. Let's push it forward. The Mighty Gust comes out and separates the team. We'll go ahead and roll it forward. You can see the Sundering right there, the instant Mighty Gust. So. That allows the team to try and be a little bit safer. The Phoenix comes out to try and do a little bit of zoning, but here is the highlight. Let's pause it right now. Silence right here from the Wailing Arrow is Kael'thas, but there's a gentleman who we'll be talking to in a moment who's about to take care of this because you're about to see a very beautiful Divine Bomb. Let's get this through. And here's Yao Yao here in the back as Wolf highlighted. It's going to trigger right about now, and you can see there's the thing that turns it. Now, off screen right here, this is where things get crazy because we're going to see Falstad get deleted, and at the same time, we're going to see Rhaegar get deleted. Now, let's pause it. This is why that Divine Palm was so important. Kael'thas is able to rotate up. He's going to take care of Sylvanas. Now, let's roll it forward, because that's going to happen just slightly off screen. There's only so much, because it's all going crazy here. This allows Dignitas to really start to turn things around. Guess who's going to come back and pay another visit? to X team here. He comes right back down. He's going to say, hey guys, guess what? I'm Kael'thas. Guess what I do? I kill people. He goes in, another gravity lapse comes in, and he goes bye-bye. Just beautiful play. I, I mean, that is just 
Dignitas right there showing why they're here. And uh, we've got one of those guys here. Yeah, indeed we do. We have Bakery, the team captain, of course, from Team Dignitas here at the panel. Welcome, first of all, and congratulations on your victory over X Team. Thank you very much. Now, for all of you out there who are wondering, hey, I want to play these Vikings in Hero League solo queue as well. You know, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a tricky pick. It was a little bit of a tricky pick. Can you talk us through it and what exactly are the strengths of Vikings on Dragonshire? So Vikings are a really difficult pick to deal with, especially if you've never seen it before. You just chuck them top lane and they have the shrine about 80% of the time. Sure, they get pushed in. Sure, they maybe lose a tower, but it's just so hard to play against. And when it gets to the late game, you can split the Vikings. You can just avoid the team fights, just soak it out, get talent leads. And that's not at all what we did, but that's definitely what we're aiming to do. <laughs> if I recall correctly, <laughs> there, <laughs> if I recall correctly, there was also a little bit of a different Vikings build, very focused and centered on Baylock. Uh, I honestly have no idea. Snitz just <laughs> all right. how he won. All right. uh, so sometimes we take that one. Sometimes we go for a much more split push one. It just depends on the game, really. All right, Calder, I'm sure you have many questions to be asked to Bakery. I mean, there's a lot of talk about about the two games, but I want to go a bit away from that for a moment. You faced one of the Chinese teams. You uh, made sure they did not get eliminated now. Going forward, have you still stuff that you can show the fans? Have you still some couple of pocket strategies that you are willing to, uh, to show in the next few games when everything is on the line? We've still got a few, definitely. We've been hiding uh, at least two picks all week in scrims. We haven't played it a single time. And we're really confident in it, so I'm hoping the opportunity presents itself and we can bring it out and really make Europe proud. I, I, I have a question. Uh, just, I, I want to throw this out here. Um, you, you will most likely face my insanity again. <laughs> um, but no, no, which, no, no, no. I think you're misjudging that next series I've been seeing. <laughs> but which, which team would you rather face? My insanity a second time or Tempest? We definitely rather face the Tempest. Like as we saw in the first series, my insanity really have a handle on the style that we like to play, and they know how to shut us down. We scrimmed a bit against Tempest uh, yesterday when they got here, and things were really positive from our side. I think it's a good matchup for us. Both teams don't really have too much cheese. They don't really have amazing strategies, but the team fights are top notch. And I think that's the kind of game we want to play. Okay. Right, any final words to the Heroes of the Storm community out there and of course all your fans because you're one of the few teams from Europe that is still in the tournament and you are looking to redeem the West, of course. Okay, so I'd like to thank everyone for cheering for us. I just want to reassure everyone, this is not how strong we are. This is not us playing. If we find our form, then I really think we have a great shot at this tournament. All right, thank you very much, Bakery, and best of luck on your future journey in this tournament. For now, we're also going to take a look, of course, at what the bracket situation is currently like. I mean, we see Dignitas just advancing against X Team, making it all the way to, the, to that deciders match. However, we've got more to come in this Group B. My insanity is facing none other than the current Korean champion, of course, Team Tempest. And that is going to be one hell of a series, Jay Hao. I, I mean, you want to talk about uh, the ultimate proving ground? This is my insanity's chance to say, hey, we're actually as good as we have shown so far. I mean, yes, they made it through the early group stage, but that's because they came together kind of late in terms of showing how strong they were at the second regional. But as far as what we've seen the last month or so, they've looked like one of the best teams in the world, Kaldor. I'm very excited for this. This is going to be, for my insanity, another chance to show themselves because when we saw them the last time on that big global stage in Seoul, it was a bit of a different situation for them, and they didn't really do as well against the Korean teams. They learned a lot from it. They said, we want to have another chance to show these guys how strong we actually are, and this is their shot. Someone I also want to highlight real quick here is, of course, Alex Saproji. Do you think that he has stepped up his own individual play? Is he now a better part of the whole team unit? That is, of course, Team Dignitas Wolf. Uh, I, I think that's definitely... I definitely saw improvement from the one series to the next. Right. But uh, for me, you know, when I looked at it, I was I was looking more at JPL success on stitches and especially the final game. It looked really, really strong. And I want to like for me, yeah, Alex Approji didn't look as strong in the first series. I know he's been kind of a controversial figure over in Europe, right. but whether or not he fills the role that Wubby once did. But I do think that JPL was the star and he played much better. All right. Uh, Calder, final words. I feel like when we come back to this, I sound a bit like a broken record, but I really believe <laughs> it's you can't fault Alex for tour. You can't do that. He comes in a new team, they have different shot calling, they have a different approach. They retreated more often into a passive and safe position than Navi did. So I feel Alex just like fits in very well. They found their rhythm. 
Jay is much happier being in this new position now too, and therefore that team is just looking so much stronger. And as Bakery just said, they have not even shown anything. If they yeah. find their final form, we could see them go a long way here. There is definitely more to come, of course, from the side of Team Dignitas as well, but also something that we always are very happy to announce here at the desk is, of course, the Free Hero Week. Starting at June 24th, lasting all the way until June 27th, you are going to be able to play every hero in the game for free. And guess what? That also means you can all level them up to level 5 and get those 500 juicy gold pieces and make yourself a very happy player. Also, of course, there is an app that we want to highlight, The Score Esports. Download it onto your phone, visit it when you're sitting in front of your computer, and, you know, check the latest Heroes of Storm, Storm news and also, of course, the latest highlights and scores coming all the way from this Summer Championship. For now, we have the winner's match coming up very soon, so don't go anywhere and stay tuned. We'll be back in a few minutes.